Good evening, how you doing today? We have a beautiful video for you and uh, we want to talk about some things that going to get a little bit radical but it's not really too radical so I don't want to go into that but I want you to see this very important video and it's about trying to help us understand the scripture part of our energy and how we need to get involved with the things that is going to build us this day and this time, okay? This lecture is called Black and Powerful, Black and Powerful, Social Revolution, 2022 to 2026, and 2026 to 2043, Social Revolution. Down here we will have Without Bloodshed, because when you go talking about social revolution, it scares some people. But we need a social revolution, okay, in order to bring our people, to unify our peoples, so we could be able to unify other peoples of the world. But first, we got to unify this nucleus that we have. African Americans, American Africans, as they want to be called, we need to do what we need to do to build our people. It's not time to be trying to let somebody else tell us how to build our people. We need to look at ways that we could build our people. God has given us ways that we can understand and things we need to do. We need to understand the past, present, and future. And understanding that from a biblical point of view, not literal biblical, but through the arts, we can know what we need to do and how we need to manifest ourselves at this particular time of human history. It's very important. Now, let's read the scripture. Genesis 1. Two to four. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, thought it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Now, most people, when they read this, they think that this is a literal light, like sunlight, daylight, uh, the moon, like uh, darkness, etc. It's not. This is about light bringing you out of a dark state into the knowledge of things. In other words, building you that you will understand the light of knowledge, the light of knowledge. And move you from that that dog state, mean just regular how man think of things. Just that's a dog state. Just whatever goes goes. Okay, and we've been living in this world at this time of human history, coming out of the dark age, uh, what they call the Iron Age, in a dark state of consciousness because of many reasons, because of the way that our DNA. It is operating in this dark age and etc. So we need to understand that and a lot of manipulation in this. We, we're coming out of the age of Pisces and this age of Pisces is an age of deception. So we don't travel through after Noah, Gemini age, an age of light. We don't travel through two ages. We have traveled through Taurus, Aries, and Pisces. These are all dark ages and all them times your DNA cause your uh, physical body to live less life. It's, you hear the story how God said to Noah that uh, I'm going to, man have became wicked, I'm going to reduce his age to 120 years after Noah done to live 900 something years old looking like a 30, 40 year old man. You know, and people don't know that when they say that man have become wicked, you got to understand what that means. It's not, it's, it's literally, he don't mean it literally like that. It's something that you have to understand that got man that way. And it, it was not just he was drinking and all this and all that. No, 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 no. It will have nothing to do with that. Okay, that's a result of once you become to a certain level of consciousness. And we have to see these things in the possession of the equinox. You got to see the arts, my people. It's very important. Now, let's go on with this episode. I'm going to say without bloodshed, okay? Now, why do we need a social revolution? We need a social revolution because just recently, just recently in the last two decades, I imagine, the last two decades, three, but I know within the last 50 years, but the last two decades, in the time of the computer coming out, they increased the knowledge, 
our society, especially among black Americans, uh, African Americans, our society have not known some crucial things to bring you up. You know, what we did in the 60s, we came up a little bit and, uh, and um, Martin Luther King said that it was as though he brought his people in a burning fire because when they gave us a lunch counter, they took the businesses from us. Blacks wanted to ride in the Eurocentric bus, and, and a city bus and stuff, and not in their own bus company and etc. Blacks wanted to sit at somebody else's lunch counter instead of developing more lunch counters for themselves. And a lot of times they didn't mind that happen because the young people were pushing that and the young people was not understanding what part of what they was doing and they were pushing it because he had a lot, young leader and, and King did what he had to do in trying to make things happen and he needed to do that. At that time, that needed to be done because it stopped a lot of Jim Crow laws and Jim Crowism of the South and some of the Jim Crowism they had on reach up north. So, what happened is no regret because it needed to do that, although we lost a lot of businesses and stuff like that. That needed to be done because sometimes in a mental state, the black folks or the peoples of color or the Negroes or the American Negro, or the Afro-American, he needed to know that we could challenge, we could uh, operate on, on the any setting. When you go into a school with uh, another school, uh, 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 another race in that school, another group of people, and you realize that, hey, tip to tap, competition. I could get my work just like you get your work. Some of them, I get my work better than you get your work. And we had this attitude where we had to do better than other individuals. Now, we don't need to worry about being in somebody else's school. We need to really come out of their school into our own schools now. We need that educational system that tells us that we had empires which our, in our education system don't show us. We had the, Mai, the Mali and the Songhai Empire. Our education system don't say that we had uh, 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 nations, Cherokee, Hebrew nation right here on the soil. Our education don't tell us in Christopher Columba diary, he seen black folks, Africans, was over here trading when he was here, trading with uh, the indigenous people, the Indians. And in one of the books, a guy from Harvard wrote a book on it and said that from the white historians and, and et cetera, who wasn't American and, and they were great writers, they, they used the term that, and he used the term in there that, that you couldn't tell who was here first, the African in America or the Native Americans. And they didn't like that. They kicked him out of Harvard, et cetera. They didn't like that because that didn't go along with eugenics and all this other stuff that they put in there to keep us from knowing who we really are. They Even when the whole premise of the uh, whole thing of, of teaching you in a way that they wanted to teach you because they saw the missionaries in there and all to teach you the way they wanted to teach you, it was to lose your identity, lose any history you had. That's why they wouldn't let, let the... Uh, uh, let the adults and the children read books. They didn't want you to know and find out anything about your past and how great your your past was and how you ruled the world, the then known world under the Egyptian Empire and all that. They didn't want you to know that. They even tried to make you think that Egyptian wasn't part of the Africans and all that. They didn't want you to know the history of the Egyptians and and uh, and and Cush and all this Cushites and all this. Other. They didn't want you to know none of this stuff. And because of that, you have a false teaching of reality. And our peoples need that out of their head. They need to be re-educated to the truth. You ain't got to be re-educated to blackness, just the truth. And it'll free you from this condition. Because our people have been taught that they was inferior when actually they were superior to other races and other people for a long time. They ruled long before, right before the... Uh, 1450s, before the 1450s, when you was in the dark age, you had major universities all over the Songhai and Mali Empire, many other things. You had the top universities of the world was in that land, your people land, your, your land, okay? As well so as many things was developed here in the uh, Mayas and, and all that. You had the Omax school here to let you know that your people's had kingdoms here, but they don't want you to know that, see, because 
you know, they drop, they dump uh, uh, the European uh, human garbage over here. See, because they wanted to get rid of some of the peoples out of Europe. And you got to remember, Europe was in the dark age. Europe uh, uh, didn't uh, uh, build guns to go and go after slaves. They built guns to protect themselves from their own clans. And that's what they manufactured that gun for and stuff. But yet, as time went on, we lost it. We lost that power grab that we had. We lost that unity that we had. And then uh, the Portuguese wanted to go around the west coast of Africa for the gold because they had heard of Mansa, Mansa, uh, whatever his name, and, and some of the other peoples. And they were looking for gold. They weren't looking for slaves in the beginning. They were looking for gold, vast amount of gold and stuff. And see, you're not learning none of this stuff. They don't teach you this in the public school system because they want you to know only what the Eurocentric ideology wants you to see so you could be submissive. And you got to get out of that. You got to want more. You got to understand that you are black and powerful. You need to see that. You need to see that. Now, when I say black and powerful, I'm not talking about black color skin, because none of us really in America most of black on it. Most of you see African black, 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 really color black. You see brown, most of brown, and lighter and lighter and lighter. Brown. Okay. But what is this black that the minister is talking about? This black is something you got to know the arts about. It's a struggle that's coming out of this darkness into the light, out of the dark age, out of the uh, uh, what they call in, in, in King Nebuchadnezzar's uh, dream, the legs uh, of iron, that blackness, that, that part that's far away from service that you got to work your way out of in order to come into the light. And that's what we're doing right now. We're working our way out of out of that blackness, that dark age ideology, and we are coming into the light. So as we coming into it, we have to be powerful. So this struggle by coming through this particular time into the light, we have to be powerful. Knowing the past, knowing who we are, knowing that no matter what they say about us that came about in the dark age cannot uh, uh, offend us because we are powerful people. We got to be powerful. We got to think with power. Think that I'm individual, I'm a God man, or uh, you're a woman, you're a God woman, and I am powerful. And you got to understand this now. Because people's afraid when you go into that mode where you're saying you're powerful. Black and power, black power is not what they want to hear, but black power is what they're going to get. Because it's written in the way that it's written. That you got to come out and have your own nation. So you got to be black power. Black power. And don't be less than that. Don't let nobody try to talk you out of seeing what you are. Black power. You are God's that's pushing through this dark age, this dark black age. And you're pushing that energy out your way so you could be who you are. A powerful peoples into the light. And you need this. Now it's the old fun. Okay, now the reason I say that is because here you're going to see the procession of the equinox. You're going to see that this is a dark age, the black age, okay? And you were coming out of that. Everybody in the black age, everybody. Everybody's in the black age. Everybody who want to be somebody and want to strive, you got to go every country, every nation, everybody to come out of this dark age the best you can and, and, and be the people that you're supposed to be because it's created like that. This is the Black age or the dark age. This is the age that the devil ruled. Okay? He ruled that age. Now you are at right here and you're coming out of that blackness. So you're pushing your way out of it in spite of the odds. In spite of someone saying that you are inferior when you're really superior. You're pushing the, you're pushing the envelope to get out of that. You have done many things. In, 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 as an athlete, as a, 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 a as an inventor, and stuff like that. Alexander Graham Bell could not have done what he done without the black inventor being there, knowing how to draw the schematics and all the other things for that telephone and all that. The traffic light, all that. The, uh, the things that go, uh, the shoes, 
in the production of the shoes, uh, the thing that deal with the cotton, and the things that deal with all kind of stuff, manufacturing people, you was inventors, you are inventors. And to invent something, you got to have a high level consciousness. They were stealing your patent and acting like it was their patent. And McCoy, the guy named McCoy, the inventor McCoy, he was invented so many different things and he invented the uh, machine that, that uh, the oil, the railroad, because in the railroad in the hilly area, the mountain area, the railroad uh, things were falling apart. He invented to keep it together. He invented so many things that, and White was stealing so many of his inventions that when they went to the patent office, and it was about a cup link, about uh, uh, the train or something like that. The people at the patent always had to ask, uh, is, this, is this the real McCoy? That's where the term real McCoy came in. Is this the real McCoy or is this just something that you, you know? And they knew that they, they knew that these people were stealing from McCoy in order to do certain things. So you had very bright intellectual people at the time, at the various time of history, and they was leading in different things. You had a uh, Carla G. Wilson. You had uh, you had uh, uh, the guy that uh, did the peanuts. Uh, you had many other people. You had oh man, you just go down the line, and there's so many people. I came a name of all that actually contributed a lot to the development of America. You could even go to the soldiers, and the soldiers contributed a lot to the development of America. France was so impressed with these black soldiers at the time, World War I and World War II. See, this United States government had done some nasty things to black folks, okay? Because the human waste of Europe, those ones that, that uh, were dumped off into America, they still had those nasty attitudes. Okay, and so it just fit right on in as they wanted to hog up your land because you got to know in Europe they had rocky ground and stuff. They couldn't grow stuff for like this. People were starving in Europe. Some of the people were dressed, looked like, oh, come on. You know, they had to learn how to take a bath. Some of them wasn't even a basin for well, some of up to some. They had one of the kings that he ain't took what, two baths in the whole life. Okay, because they thought that was to take a bath was something that was medical. Not something that you do for hygiene. And most people then say, well, that's impossible. They could read. Read. Prove me wrong. Okay? Prove me wrong. See, the Indians and the Africans that live here, they always took a bath. When, when a lot of European explorers and, and, and individuals came here, they thought this was a paradise. They seen all the green, fertile ground and all this. Fruit trees, they had rivers with trouts, and you could look in the water and just see the trouts, and you could just throw, you ain't got to put bait on the hook, you throw the hook down there and bang them. You pull them out of the water, just like that. You had abundance here. And people got to understand that. Now, why I'm talking so much about this? Because God wants you to have a nation here in America. And people don't know that. But church folks ain't never taught you that. Okay, and it's right in your Bible. See, the Bible wasn't written for somebody else. It was written about you. King James son here to the United States of America. That book is about the United States of America. It was not sent around England. It was not sent to no other nation. It was sent directly here. Nowadays, we take it everywhere, but that Bible was sent for the United States of America. And most people don't know it because they don't know nothing hardly about the arts. So they wouldn't know what's really in that Bible, what's hid. See, when you were dealing with those aristocrats, you were dealing with the Renaissance, you were de they were dealing with the arts, but they never taught you the arts. And so when someone like myself started opening you up to these things, you wouldn't know. It's like, wow, I, I never heard of that before. I thought the Bible was written for everybody. And you see, you'll see that. Let's go on. Now, we're going to go over here and look at this. And the procession of equal now, you need to know that because this is the time to end right here. Okay. This is the time we're in. Now, what happened? This happens. Over, I wrote this over here because this go over and over again. The earth go here, go here, go here, go all the time. Billions of years we go through this process. And while we're going through it, at the same time, Sirius is coming here, here, here. So these two, we have two sons in our universe. We got Sirius and we got our son. And this is happening. And in that process, there's a DNA change. In that process, because the illumination of Sirius uh, uh, with our sun give us at times when we are here, 
We live in no more, the Bible says, like Psalm 7 to 80 years. Here, we live in 120 years. Here, we live in 120 years. But here, at Noah time, we're living a thousand years. Here, at the Son of Man time, which we're coming in right now, we live a thousand years. So there's DNA change all in this here. Then here, it drops. But here, and we got to see that. You've never been taught that. You'll hear the scripture say, well, God said, uh, uh, Man was wicked and he told Noah that he's going to reduce their age to 120 years. It got nothing to do with wicked. It had nothing to do with the word wicked. It has something to do with you fall away from serious and by being so away from serious, less illumination, less uh, energy of that life-giving energy that is going to transform your DNA and you less because it's way over here. So you fall away from it. When it get here, you got even less years, like some say, seven to eight years. That's when serious is dead. But when it get here, now people have moved back to 120 years. Some people live up to 120 years. But we done got right here at the paradigm shift. At the paradigm shift, as above, so below, as below, so above. And that's why you hear the scripture say you reign with Christ for a thousand years. That's what it means right there. After the age of uh, Pisces, uh, after the dark age. And we have to see it. That's what they call the end of time, the end of the dark age. And we must understand this stuff because what it's going to do, it's going to energize us, it's going to give us a more understanding of God's universal cause and what he is doing with us. He's making us at what we are. We are gods. And different people are going to come at different times. These people that came in the dark age, they need to go come in the dark age for a dark age lesson. But these people that's coming to the planet now, the ones here now, and the ones coming to the planet, they don't need to go through none of that nonsense. That racism and all that other stuff. They don't need to go through none of that. They didn't come here at the time that they come in here for all none of that crap. So all that got to be cleared up and we need to be going into this other age. So all this racism and all this other none of that, one race, the human race. You're going to have and know about other beings at this time, but only one race. And you need to stick your race together, one race, because who want to marry and be marrying a lizard person? Okay, that stands up just like you walking, like you talking, but he's a lizard person. And you're going to see that these different beings come from different dimensions of time and come into our space at that time. That way you need to get your act together, people. You need to get your act together, get to some prejudice and all this nonsense. You better than me, I'm better than you and all that. That got to go. That got to go. One race, people. It's one race. And we got to get in tune with that and know what we need to do. We need to make it bring equality, unity with integrity to all our people. I mean, black, white, as they call it. And I hate to use that term, black and white, because that's no such thing. That's a man construct. That's they ain't got nothing to do with reality. It's a construct that been man done brought into being in the during uh, in the uh, 1600s. Okay, and and it's a record, and you could trace it back during the time of Nathan Bacon. You could trace this back. So it's none nothing that it ain't history on it. You can trace it back. Okay, let's go further. Isaiah 45, 2 to 4. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gate of brass and cut in cinder the bar of the vine. Now, all this is telling you about is this movement we finna make in the possession of the equinox. Right here, right here, you see the bars of iron, right in here. We're coming out of this here, so he's talking about this time right here. We're coming out of this here, going out of this iron age, because it got to go. You got to break it in the sun. It got to go, and all that energy, all that negative energy, wars, and all this rumors of wars, and all this other stuff, all this stuff got to go. It cannot exist any longer, so we got to put an end to it. And when God, when God do his thing this time, we're going to be glad to get out of that nonsense because of the way that weapon tree is today. Okay, and when you see that, you're going to see a, a, a bar of iron. That means coming out of this level here, from this hill into that. Okay, also, you're going to see a gate of brass. Now, notice what brass. Brass and bronze is really, is, is serve the same purpose. So if you see brass, remember on, on here, it used the word bronze, but it's the same thing, serve the same purpose. Okay, so we're coming out here and going into this bronze age. What is it? Gates of bronze. That means a gate is something that you enter. You enter into it. Okay, you enter into it. So we are in, up here, we are entering into it, and down here in the procession, we're coming out of it. So we are entering into 
the gates of bronze, uh, what they call the gates of, of brass. So we need to know that. This is what it's talking about. This here is talking about right here. But see, if you don't know the answer, you don't know that. So you need someone to teach you this, to know what position or where we are going to at this time of human history. We got to understand this. It's very important. And, and you also see this in uh, King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. When Daniel interpreted his dream, you're going to see that. Because right here, it's going to show defeat part, part of iron and part of clay. That's right here. You're going to see uh, uh, the leg of iron. That's this part right here. So you're going from a lesser to a greater. Okay. Then you're going to see over here, you're going to see uh, the uh, the waist and the stomach uh, of, of bronze. And then you're going to see the belly and the arms of silver. And then you're going to see the head of gold. That's what this is all about. See, when you hear about King Nebuchadnezzar's dream and Daniel interpret that dream, you got to know the arts and know what they're really talking about. They're talking about the possession of the equinox. And God is saying to uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, saying to our society, that you're not going to carry this madness or you're not going to rule like you rule here. See, most people don't realize in every age, God got families and got peoples to rule in that age. So these peoples in this dark age here, they ain't going to be the ones that rule over here. No, because they are dark age rulers. They can't. They can't. Their mind ain't, ain't adjusted. They're maladjusted. Their mind ain't that way it need to be to be able to, to rule in a peaceful state. In a, a state that you're giving to people and not taking away from people. You helping them grow intellectually. You helping them grow morally. You helping them grow economically. And you're not afraid of them growing and growing and growing. You're not afraid of it. And you need that type of leader. So what, right now, the kind of leaders that come out of this dark age ain't those kind of leaders. And the nations that come out of the dark age, unless they make some transition, and this is why you're going to have a dynasty change. Okay? And you're going to see that in most nations, especially in America. America cannot stay like it is with the presidents and the, and the thing like it got and, and all that and still push laws that's going to hurt one group and then benefit another, going to hurt one class. I always remember that. It ain't just a, a group like that. It's classes too. There's a certain class and, and do good well to the other. You got when uh, uh, you got 1% on about 75 to 80% of the wealth of America, 1% on about 75 to 80% of the wealth of America, that can't exist in this new age that we're going into. God is not going to permit it. It's just not going to happen. The universe is not going to permit it. It's not going to happen, my people. So you've got to have a transition. I know people don't like transitions. They don't want to say, well, I'm going to run the nation to stay rough and stay mighty long as I'm on the planet, please. Mm -mm. It ain't going to happen, people. This thing going to change. Either America got to make that transition or God going to destroy it. That's why you hear them talk about the myth of the bird. Of that bird that they talk about. Uh, I forgot the name of that bird. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Now, anyway, it's a bird that they talk about. Some of you may know right off hand. Uh, the phoenix bird. That's it. The phoenix bird. That's why they talk about the myth of the phoenix bird. The miracle falling and then rising up out of its ashes. That's what that phoenix bird prophecy is all about. And you have to understand that. It's time for a transition. It's a paradigm shift. We've got to see that. Let's go on further. Daniel 2, 27 to 30. And Daniel answered, answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king have demanded cannot be cannot the wise men and the astrologers and the magicians, the soothsayers, show unto the king. But there is a God in heaven. Thought. See there? But there is a God in heaven. Thought. What do thought heaven have? Heaven have 37 different meanings. So this is a God in heaven. A God of a higher level consciousness. A God of great. When I see thought, when he came to me in a vision, he came to me from the heavens. Okay? He came to me from the heavens. A God in heaven reveals secrets and make known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. When is the latter days? Now. So that vision about that, uh, the head of gold, the uh, arms and, and uh, waist 
arm and breadth of silver and the uh, the waist and the uh, thighs of of brass, a bronze, a brass. Which one you want to say? And the legs of iron and the feet part of iron, part, part of clay. It's this right here. This is what it's all about right here. But they're not teaching you this. And by you not knowing the possession of the equinox, not knowing the arts, you have no clue to what's going on right now. You don't even know where you're at right now in history, in the whole scheme of things that God has developed for humanity. And we need to know where we're at. He said he'll tell you the past, present, and future. When the spirit of truth shall come, it should show you things of the past, present, and future. And you have to see this. Now let's go a little further. It's say of heaven, thought, reveal a secret, and make known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter day. The dream and vision of thy head upon thy bed are these. And then I get into that. Then 29 go. And he thought, revealed, secrets made known to thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom. Thought I have, have more than any living, but for their sake, for their sake, thought shall make known the interpretations of the king and of the king. And thought thy mayest know the thoughts of thy heart. Now, what is he saying? Thought, he's gonna let you know the thoughts of the heart. He's gonna know, let you know what this is all about. See, thought is to come in our life right now. You hear nobody ain't even talking about thought until we start talking about thought. You got many people don't even know nothing about what thought is. Thought is Melchizedek. Melchizedek is in the Bible. Abraham went into Egypt. Thought is one of the high priests of, he's Melchizedek, known as the high priest of the Almighty God, Melchizedek. And you need to know that. And God has let permitted thought to be a guide for us, not in, 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 in back time, but in this life. Thought will visit the ones that are to do lead, to be certain leaders and, and, and make certain changes in this nation, this world. Not just a nation, but this world. And we have to see that. Isaiah 45, 3 to 4. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. What is the treasures of darkness? This is this is, is the darkness. This part right here. This is the treasures. These are the darkness. Now what? The treasures of darkness is the hidden thing in the dark age. The hidden things in the dark age that you need to know. You need to know to move forward. And what is that? They done hid the arts. It, it, uh, part of Daniel to tell you about how they hide the arts from you and they use the craft and they they come confederate against you. They don't want you to know these truths. They don't want you to know certain things. So they hide it from you. So those hidden treasures got to be revealed. This certain knowledge got to be revealed. So you can know that. And we'll go forward. And thought I have more than any living. But for their sake, thought shall make known the interpretation of the king. And thought thy may have known the thoughts of thy heart. Let's go to Isaiah 45, 3 to 4. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. Thought thy may have known. Thought I, the Lord, will call, which call thee by thy name. I am God of Israel. Now let's read that again. I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. Thought, thy male know, thought I, the Lord. Thought, this is what thought, thy male know, thought I, the Lord, which called thee by thy name, am the God of Israel, which is the God of Lewis, the God of Israel. And we got to understand Israel, Lewis, is a name, Israel is a code name for Lewis as well, so is Jesus is a code name for Lewis. Now we're going to go over here a little further and deal with this. Isaiah 45, 5 to 7. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girdle thee, though thou had not known me. 
Okay, and what is he saying? God is, is, is bringing out how he had brought the messenger into the priesthood, Agurbadi. In other words, brought him to, even before thought was known in the Bible, a thought was known by the messenger. He said, Agurbadi, in other words, I made thee a priest. I made thee a priest. Okay, and that's what he's saying. Okay, and not only saying that to them, he's saying that to the ones that are coming under the messenger who will be priests in the future. Your children, 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 and all that will be a part of that priesthood. Okay, and when it's not priesthood like priests today, priests they in a monastery, da 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 da. You could be a priesthood and in the priesthood and you're a CEO. You could be a priesthood and you're an inventor. You could be in the priesthood and you're a teacher. You could be so it ain't ain't priesthood ain't about church. Okay, it's about a way of life, a people that's standing for certain uh, ways that they want to endure and, and, and carry themselves. So that's basically what it is. Okay, now let's go further. Uh, thought they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west. Okay, you got to see that. Thought there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. I formed the light and created darkness. I made peace and created evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. And we got to see, God is the one that all this, he created and shaped all this stuff for his glory to make sure certain things be done. And for our test, we come down here and we are going through this process because we are put in this process to bring ourselves out of darkness into the light, to be better people, better uh, uh, beings, better gods. And this is the whole process, to be like God, to be like the source. And that's what our journey is here, to press, to be like the source. And this is what it is. Now, we're going to deal with Jew. In the odds, we've got to understand something. The word Jew, people look at the word Jew, and they think that Jew goes all the way back to... Um, Palestine time and the time they say Jesus and all this and before Jesus and all that. No, no. The word Jew is a modern day word. It came out in the 14, 1500s and it was spelled L E W in our day, but it's a subname, have a subname. The subname to Jew is L E W. This is mean, this is what it was spelled before. The subname is L E W I S. This is the subname to Jew. But what Jew was spelled before it became Jew, it was L-E-W. Most people don't know that. I told someone that and they, they said, oh, okay, I taught a lesson. They said, oh, I ain't, I ain't never heard that before. So they went and checked it. And they checked it down. You know, you're right. Jew was spelled L-E-W, not J-E-W, back in the 14, 1500s. And people don't know that. And the subname for Jew was Lewis, L-E-W-I-S. Many people still don't know that even today. And we got to see that. Jacob, we know the story about Jacob. Jacob wrestled with the angel, thought, and Jacob's uh, name was changed to Israel, but they never told you what Israel's name was changed to. Israel's name was changed to Lewis. L-E-I-S. See this? L-E-I-S. And you take the S and you turn a certain way. I want you to see this. Turn my drawing on the board sometime. I want you to see this. I want you to see this S. This S. The S go like that. Okay? This part, turn it that way. This part, turn it that way. And that's how you got your W. You could get your W and also you could get your M the same way. This part, turn it upside down that way. This part connects to that. And you get your M. But most people have never heard this before. And so when they see that, they can see L E, they can see I S, but they cannot see the, the W or the M. And this was Hebrew typology. And this is why, this is the thing that they was using. They was using the craft on you. They were using certain parts of art and the craft go together at times. They were using it on you to keep you deceived from knowing what was going on. Jacob is Israel and Israel is Lewis. Jew is Lou and Jew is Lewis. And, and they never teach you that. They don't want you to know this stuff because you'll start figuring stuff out. Then you'll figure out why Louis, this one here. Louis 14 was known as the sun god. And what do that mean? 
Son of God. That's the Christ. So they was creating these Louis from Clovis, from Clovis. They were creating the Louis from Clovis, the French, or the Franks King Clovis, and the Catholic Church was doing that way back in the day. Because all you got to do is get rid of the C and look at this here. L O, turn that V to this like this. I, yes. But they're never going to teach you this stuff. And this is a time, you got to know this stuff now. To know how you've been manipulated. You don't realize that you go to church and they tell you about Jesus. And Jesus is simply, let me show you Jesus too. I will show you Jesus too while I'm doing it. Let go Jesus. Let's go with Jesus. Let go Jesus right here. Put Jesus here. Uh, I'm going to take that off. Put Jesus. Now we see Jesus, okay? G this is the Son of King. Jesus is seen as the Son of King. You look on the back of some of the pictures of Jesus, you see the sun behind his head. And it's Jesus is the Son of King too. So what they do, that they did, they took the J, which, and they took the L and they turned it into the J, and they took the E. And remember what we say the S? The S, how you use the S to make that W. And the U, if you take this U, I'm going to use the U over here. If you take this U and do that, you, you turn it sideways, take this sideways, take that and put that in the middle, there go your eye. And that's what they was doing. They were playing these games on you. And you don't even know it. Jesus is Lewis. But most people don't know that. And they need to understand that. Because without this kind of knowledge, you don't know that they're manipulating you. And you go to church, I don't want to hear what the you got to say about that. I, I, my Jesus, I know my Jesus. People, you got, you're dealing with an image. You're dealing with an image. And you got this. And I, I don't care what color you make him. You can make him white, you can make him black. It don't matter what color you make him. You're dealing with an image, a false image. Jesus was not to come until this time here, right here. That person, that spirit person, that Christ person wasn't to come until this time here. Just like Noah was to come at this time, this particular prophet it was not to come until this time. So all this dark age, this is the devil ruled that. Jesus was not to come. And, and Egyptian mythology show you the time Horus come. It show you how a uh, set it's going to rule all that, and then Horus come, and Horus rule all this. And then it repeats itself. But they're not teaching you nothing, none of the arts. And you go to church, and you jump, and you shout, and you sing the Jesus songs, and etc. And you don't realize that through your heart, through your heart, God is blessing you. Because he know they done lied to you in the age of Pisces. The age of the seven. He know they done lied to you. But God loved you so much that he still blessed you. But he can't deliver you out of the condition you're in until that person come, the true Jesus, the true Lewis come, and do his job at the paradise ship. He ain't going to do that. And that's why you got Martin Luther King came, you had Marcus Garvey came, you had all the other boys, you had the Bold came, you had uh, Booksy Washington came, and many people before that, and they couldn't get you out of this condition. You had uh, Elijah Muhammad came, you had, now you have a minister, that none of them could get you out of this condition, okay? They couldn't get you out of this condition. First, the timing, and they was not that individual, okay? You cannot take the birth right from that individual, Israel. You cannot take Israel's birth right. Because when you see in Isaiah, it say, and it talk about Israel, uh, uh, Jacob wrestling, Jacob wrestling with the angel. And then the angel make, thought make him a prince with power, with God, and with man. That's when he, you see it, call him Israel. That's what it's about. That, that transition is in that person now. This transition is in this person here. See, they wouldn't give you the true name because then they'll be telling something that they don't want you to know. So they give you the name Israel. <laughs> Look at how I it. Israel. They give you the name Shiloh. They give you the name Emmanuel. All these names stand for this name here. They, they are codes for this name here. And you need to see that. Okay. 
That's very important. So what I'm saying in this lecture, it's time for you to be black and powerful. That means coming out of this age and be powerful. You need to understand it's time for power now. It's time for power, my peoples. It's time to empower yourself so you can know that you could build a kingdom just like you could get a black president up there. Why you can't do what you're supposed to do and build yourself a nation? Come on, now you had a nation in the past. There are many nations in the past. Come on. Our people have got so lazy and so comfortable under this Eurocentric thing. Let them rule everything. Okay, you want to rule the money? Go rule the money. You want to rule the industry? Okay, go rule the industry. You want to rule uh, uh, my neighborhood? Okay, rule my neighborhood. You want to uh, uh, rule what I eat and put at my dinner table? Well, do that. You want to rule uh, uh, the way that I see God? Well, do that. And that's what you done done. You done done all that. And God ain't going to have it no more, people. No, no. You are the most educated people of, rate, of, 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 of color. Of the color people of the world, you're the most educated ones right in America. God made you that, put you here, brought you up here, because you already, some of you already are here, brought you up in this so you could do your job. Now it's time for you to do the job. Quit letting other people run your life. It's time for you to start unifying yourself with integrity. Quit trying to live all over the United States and find a territory that God has said in his word for you to live now. So you're trying to live all over, trying to live in Alaska, trying to live in New York, trying to live in Chicago, all these places, trying to live in, in uh, California and all that. He said he's going to gather you from all these counties. You got a place here. He just told where Hagar went, where the fountain at. Where's the fountain? fountain? The fountain is the fountain of youth. Where's that at? That's in Florida. So you got the whole strip, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, where you last had a Hebrew nation at. But they didn't tell you that. And you got to start right back there again and build yourself and overlook and overshadow this, this, what this Eurocentric desire is and build your own, what they call manifest destiny. And that's what this is all about now. You need to build your own manifest destiny. So what you're going to do? You're going to do what? You're going to create a social revolution. Why do you need a social revolution? Because the timing called for it. The timing called for a social revolution, my people. It's in the arts, and I can show it to you at any time. You need a social revolution, not a, not with bloodshed. You need to just get up out of New York, get up out of Chicago, sell them houses, some of them, and in Los Angeles, see, you can get a, you can never sell a dump in Los Angeles for half a million dollars, and you don't even know. Sell that junk, come over here, and you can pay $200,000 for one of the best looking houses you ever thought you could have. Bigger, bigger and better, and more land. Okay? And everything. And sunshine year-round. Okay? And it's, it's, it's right now. It's the winter time, and it's about 82 degrees right now. I really don't need this long sleeve on. Okay? You need to get your peoples out of those ghettos of the north. Out of those concrete ghettos when... When Hillary Clinton said to Barack Obama that you uh, you work for them slum lords, hey, that's what it is. The slum lords providing me housing for our peoples and getting all this money from from the government and got our peoples in these dumps in these rat infected dumps and 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 our people need to be in a different environment because them rat infected dumps are supposed to be in temporary housing. And now they done became permanent houses. But none of your black leaders, Barack Obama, when he was there, and none of the rest of them was trying to get correct that. Why? Because they wanted to get elected and they wanted to show the white man that I could do what you're doing and look at my legacy. People, that legacy ain't about nothing. Who's going to care about that? Who's going to care about that 50 years from now? Who's going to care about that 20 years from now? Nobody care about no jump like that. Come on. Move, make some things happen for our people. Work with these five divine laws and move and shape the nation by making things happen better for our people. Organize our people. Step to our people and tell them, look, that ain't working like that. You ain't got it right. I know you're a preacher. I know you done did this, but brother, you leading our people down a dead end road right now. That was all right uh, some years ago, but it ain't all right right now. We need a nation, my people, so it ain't all right right now. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to keep this Eurocentric ideology going when God wants to give you a better one. 
Give you stuff better that they will marvel after. But you can't do it if you sit back and don't know the word of God. Ain't trying to learn the word of God and the messenger of God was really saying. It's time for you to have a nation, my people. You the ones that are the chosen peoples in that Bible. And you're not chosen because, oh, God so loved you type thing. No, you don't went through the hell to be chosen. God done let you go through something that other people will kill themselves before they go through it. So you have proven yourself to be the ones that lead your people and to lead the world out of the dark age into the bronze age, into a high level of consciousness. You have earned that right. Nobody been through the hell you've been through but you, okay? Sometimes you walk in the road, room and just because you walk in the room, you are hated. Because of the color of your skin. And this is the best skin you can have with the melanin skin. But they hate it because it's you and they're not them. And you got to wake up to this stuff, people. Peoples are really, you, you see, the, the devil get them to hate you. Because the devil know who you are. And the devil ain't pissed off at you. Mm -mm -mm -mm. People think, well, the devil don't like me and that's why. No, the devil ain't devil doing his job. Devil ruled the dark age. He know who you are. I seen the devil. He know who you are. He know who I am. And the devil know it's time for you to rule. And when I seen the devil, I seen all these men and all these warriors. And they was, they was <clears throat> leaders of nations and stuff like that. Following the devil. Because that was the age of war and bloodshed and all this other stuff. And they was not the ones to go over into this next age. And, and in that vision, I was showing that. The devil's riding out from all this stuff now. He done did his job. It's time for you to wake your peoples up and do your job now. He ain't standing in the way. Satan is in the way that Eurocentric mind that have made up all these ideas about who you are and who you should be to them and who they should be to you. Don't bump Satan. Bump Satan. Overshadow this thing and do your thing. Unify yourself. Put yourself in a position. You 60 million and be that nation. And let's go from there. I don't want to uh, go too deep in this. I'm going to cut this a little short. Um, Carlton Davis, Antoinette Mike Mullen, Adrian D. Herman, Lord Hill, Wesley Cedars, and Tamilia C. Fennell. Thank you. And we want to be able to put these names more over here now. I'm going to try to put more names on the board later. But we thank everybody who's uh, here helping us. And we're asking this year for more people to step up and help this organization grow. Help this organization reach more people. You can make your donation to Louis Armstrong Ministry at 7536 Jane Lane North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210, or Cross Rock Incorporated at that same address. Or you can go on Cross Rock Incorporated and go to Give the Five on your mobile app on the charitable and make your donation. You can also go to put PayPal at armstronglewisj at gmail.com. That's PayPal at armstronglewisj at gmail.com. Or you could go on Cash App at dollar sign SWAU 1954. That's Cash App at dollar sign SWAU 1954. And these are things that please help us. We need help. We need to grow now. We need to reach people. They need to know this knowledge that have not been taught to them. You are mighty powerful people, but you can't be powerful if you're mentally not aware of who you are and what you're supposed to be doing. We want to show you who you are. We want to show you what you're supposed to be doing so you can move forward. See, your center can't be delivered until you deliver. And you got to deliver yourself so that you deliver them as after you done delivered yourself in a process. It's a process. And does the world. And you got to see that. Don't sit there and try to be second fill. I don't care what university people are. Man, these people have lied to you left and right. They either dress up and look a certain way, have their money because it's go to the bank, their bank and get it. They could do this and that. They could live in a big old house on the beach and all this. And you think they so much intelligent? No, 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 no. 
these arts that I be working, these things that I be doing with the golden ratio and showing you a person's name and who's going to be elected and all that, they don't know none of that stuff. I come from their gas and records. None of the scholars. I don't care where he come from. Don't know that kind of stuff, people. But you can have that kind of knowledge. And God brought me to let you know you can tap into the cast and records and do the same thing or greater things than what your ancestors did at the time of building the pyramids, etc. That knowledge is sitting there waiting for you to use your head, use that peanut gland, use your concentration, eat right, eat properly, so that knowledge can come in your head. Thought is here to give you that. I'm this messenger, I'm here. Majestic messenger, I'm here. I'm written about in the Bible. Thought is written about in the Bible. See, they tried to hide thought from you. They tried to hide his messenger from you. And it's right in the book, in the Bible. I talked about it on the last lecture. And we need to see this stuff and move forward. People, we got something going on. We, we are somebody great, greater than you could ever imagine. And it's real. It's no fact, I ain't making up this crap. This is real. And you need to know that. People, you need to know who you are. You need to know who you are now. You need to know that the only person holding you back is you, as a people. White man can't hold you back now. It's you holding yourself back now. Because you want to listen to some of these dead, dark age ministers and dark age leaders instead of seeing the ones that God has sent for you for this day and time. People, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. It's Sister Brown, a mother this, a mother that ain't teaching you right, and you're trying to be faithful to something. No, you can't do that. You, you come on this planet by yourself. You're a God person, and you got to attach to the other God people, not just somebody because they say, well, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Presbyterian, I'm this, I'm that, I'm a Mormon, I'm a Buddhist, I'm a, I'm a, 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 a Moor, I'm, I'm a Hebrew, I get it, da, 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 da. Okay, search for the one that the book, the mythologists say is coming. And I'm one of them right here in your face. Quit trying to run behind everybody. You should know them people by the way they teach. If they teaching you that Jesus did this and you need Jesus and you need this religion, man, dump they behind. Okay, walk away from them. Because they lead you down a dead end road. Okay? And a lot of people ain't got the guts and the balls to say that. I say it because I know who I'm underneath. I know who I'm walking with. And I can say that. Because he's my protector. And he gives me wisdom. So I'm not coming here without love. I love you. He loves you. And that's why I'm here in your presence. So I say to you. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the ones. Keep them healthy, Father. Keep them healthy. Keep them healthy, Father. Father, we love you. And we know in our heart that you are special. Keep our head right. Keep us from being deceived by any, any force. And make sure we be able to take care of ourselves and our family more abundantly. Amen. Yo, the message from Thoth to Hori, Melchizedek, Amias Hermes, Mercury, Quetzalcoatl, Kula Khan, Pukumas, we are telling them once, rise of the children of Israel, Lewis that is.